I now hand the call over to Mr. Kedar Shirali, Global Head Investor Relations at PCS. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret. Good evening and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today to discuss PCS's financial results for the fourth quarter and full year of fiscal year 2021 that ended March 31st, 2021. This call is being webcast through our website and an archive including the transcript will be available on the site for the duration of this quarter. The financial statements, quarterly fact sheet and press releases are also available on our website. Our leadership team is present on this call to discuss our results. We have with us today Mr. Rajesh Gopinathan, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director. Good evening, everyone. Mr. N.G. Subramanian, Chief Operating Officer. Good evening, everyone. Mr. V. Ramakrishnan, Chief Financial Officer. Hello, everyone. And Mr. V. Milan Lakkad, Chief uh, Human Resources Officer. Hi, everyone. Rajesh and Ramki will give a brief overview of the company's performance, followed by a Q&A session. As you are aware, we don't provide specific revenue or earnings guidance, and anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. We have outlined these risks in the second slide of the quarterly fact sheet available on our website and emailed out to those who have subscribed to our mailing list. With that, I'd like to turn the call over to Rajesh. Thank you, Kedar. Once again, welcome everyone and uh, a very good day to all of you from wherever you're joining in. Um, before I start the call, uh, I hope all of you are safe and uh, staying uh, healthy in these uh, trying times. I'm very pleased with our performance in Q4 on the top line as well as on the bottom line. Continued strength and demand for core transformation services, market share gains, and large deal ramp-ups powered strong sequential and year-on-year -year growth. Sequentially, our revenue grew 4.2% in constant currency, 4% in rupee terms, and 5% in dollar terms. On a year-on-year -year basis, we grew 5.9% in constant currency and 10% in dollar terms, and 9.4% in rupee terms. For the full year, we crossed over into positive territory in reported terms, with revenue growth of 4.6% in rupee and 0.7% in dollar terms, with the constant currency degrowth of 0.8% negative. Our operating margin for the quarter was 26.8%, an expansion of 0.2% sequentially and 1.7% year-on-year. Net margin in Q4 was 21.2%. Our full year EBIT margin was at 25.9%, while net margin was 20.3%, excluding our one-time uh, provisions that we took for the legal expenses. I will now ask Samki to go over all the headline numbers, financial and segmental performance, and I'll join you again later to talk about the demand trends we are seeing and the emerging opportunities in growth and transformation. Over to you, Ramki. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, let me uh, walk through the headline numbers first. In the fourth quarter of FY21, our revenues grew 4.2% Q on Q and 5.9% Y on Y on a constant currency basis. Reported revenue in INR was rupees 437.05 billion, a Q and Q growth of 4% and Y and Y growth of 9.4%. In USD terms, revenue was dollar 5.989 billion, a Q and Q growth of 5% and Y and Y growth of 10%. Full year revenue in INR was rupees 1.642 trillion, which is Y and Y growth of 4.6%. In USD terms, revenue was dollar 22.17 billion, Y and Y growth of 0.7%. In constant currency, revenue declined by 0.8% over the previous year. Let me now get into the segmental details for the quarter. All growth numbers are in constant currency terms. All our verticals had strong sequential growth in Q4. BFSI grew 7% powered by large deals as well as greater investments in enhancing customer experience, expansion into newer businesses, core transformation, and rec tech. Year-on-year -year growth was also very strong at 13.3%. The retail cluster that includes CPG and travel, transportation and hospitality, also had robust sequential growth of 4%, despite continued weakness in some of the subsectors. Despite the good recovery over the last three quarters, 
retail is still in negative territory on a year on year basis our life sciences and healthcare business continues to perform very well growing 3.8% q on q and that is important is worth noting that over the last decade this business has significantly outperformed the rest of the company growing from 4.5% of our revenue in fy11 to 9.8% in fy21 in dollar terms its revenue has grown over 5.9 times during this period a 10 year cagr of 19.5% manufacturing also did well growing 3.9% q on q and 1.3% y and y technology and services grew 2.8% q on q and 3.9% y and y while our communications and media business grew 1.8% in q on q and remained below prior year levels on a full year basis life sciences and healthcare grew 17.1% bfsi 2.4% and technology and services at 0.2% while the rest continues to be below prior year levels by geography growth was led by our mar- uh, our major markets continental uh, europe group 8.5% q on q and 11.7% y and y north america grew 3.9% q on q and 5.9% y and y and uk grew 3.4% q on q and 1.1% y and y other markets grew well too middle east and africa grew 4.2% q on q and 10.6% y and y india grew 2.8% q on q and 11.2% on a year on year basis latin america grew 2.5% and 1.5% Q on Q and Y and Y respectively, and Asia Pacific grew 1.1% on the Q on Q and 1.5% on the Y and Y basis. On a full year basis, with the exception of continental Europe, which grew 5.5%, all the markets continued to be in negative territory compared to the prior year. Coming to products and platforms, our portfolio performed well in Q on Q Q4. Uh, Igneo, our cognitive automation software, signed up 15 new customers and had seven go lives. With a significantly expanded portfolio of products within this suite, Digitate is now able to cross-sell and upsell to existing customers. There were 21 such upsells to existing customers in Q4. All in all, we added over 50 customers in FY21, taking the total to over 200 customers for Igneo. During the quarter, we onboarded seven more reselling partners to our channel partner program. The product suite won two more awards and was granted three more patents, bringing the total to 30 patents granted three days. TCS Bank, our flagship product suite in the financial services domain, had five new wins and five go lives in Q4. One of our marquee wins this quarter was State Street. TCS will help enhance its retiree services offering, leveraging the newly launched TCS Bank's retirement platform, enabling access to expanded operational capabilities and enhanced technology to straight streets clients. Overall, it's been a very good year for TCS Bank with over 19 wins. Half of our platform is also attracting a diverse clientele, including digital-only neo banks. and existing banks launching new crypto banking products this momentum enabled our financial solutions business to grow sequentially every quarter this year despite the deflation resulting from the shift to side the quartz blockchain solution had two new wins in q4 and one go live in retail we had one win and one go live for omni store our ai powered commerce suite that provides unified and personalized checkout experience for shoppers across all channels in life sciences our award winning advanced drug development suite had two go lives we deployed the tcs ad uh, analytics and insights platform for a top 3 life sciences company transforming their clinical trial oversight process enabling remote monitoring of ongoing trials at globally distributed sites using dynamic monitoring and predictive analytics this platform is live now for 200 plus studies we implemented the tcs ad regulatory platform 
for a leading pharma company for automation of submission planning to a real time online portal based collaboration tool our hobs suite of solutions for communication service providers at three new win and three go live in q4 winx our ai based digital twin solution also had three wins this quarter lastly tcs mastercraft our suite of intelligent automation products for end to end enterprise application modernization had eight new agile our enterprise agile planning and delivery platform saw seven new wins coming to client metrics we showed some improvement in q4 versus the prior quarter but at higher levels it is flattish this is because the revenue contribution by customers is calculated on a, a last 12 months or ltm basis and so these metrics will somehow uh, somewhat mirror our overall revenue growth on a full year basis the number of clients in the 100 million dollar plus band stayed flat q1 q at 48 we added four more clients in the dollar 50 million plus band bringing the total to 101 we added one more client in the 10 million dollar plus band bringing the total to 387 we added four more clients in the 50 5 million dollar band bringing the total to 569 and we added 19 more clients in the 1 million dollar plus band bringing the total to 1096 let me now move over to the financial strong growth and improved operating metrics resulted in an operating margin of 26.8% and expansion of 0.2% q on q and 1.7% y on y net income margin was at 21.2% for the full year our operating margin was 25.9% and the net income margin was 20.3% including the prudential provision of rupees 1218 crores as an exceptional item towards the legal claim that we are contesting in the us courts effective date a tax rate for the quarter was 25.9% our dso in dollar terms was 68 down one day compared to q3 net cash flow from operations was rupees 92.47 billion which is 100% of our net income Free cash flow was it is 80.85 billion for the full year it was it is 379.68 billion up 17.5% y on y invested funds as at 31st march stood at 504.3 billion rupees the board has recommended a final dividend of 15 per share taking the total uh, to 37 excluding the final dividend over rupees 306.6 billion of cash has been uh, or, uh, returned to shareholders this year in the form of dividends and buybacks on the people front we had a net addition of 19388 employees during the quarter an all time high the total headcount stood at 488649 a net addition of 40185 in the course of the year It continues to be a young and diverse workforce with 154 nationalities represented and is women making up 36.5% of the base at the heart of our success in gaining share in the growth and transformation opportunity has been our organic talent development strategy we have programs that anticipate emerging technology trends and tweaks individual learning programs to build up capacity in those areas by creating fulfilling career paths that help our customers meet their expectations uh, our program other programs help identify individuals with deep customer specific contextual knowledge and augment that with deeper solution capabilities to help create teams of change agents who can build transformative solutions that are deeply rooted in the customer's reality these learning and development initiatives have gained immense popularity in this year employees log over 43 million learning hours in fy21 resulting in over 379000 employees getting trained on multiple new technologies and over 457000 trained in agile methods last 12 months attrition in it services in fy21 was 3 7.2% sorry 7.2% an all time low keep in mind though that this is partly due to the ltm effect 
and with growth returning across the index tree, we expect this to in inch up in a 522. Now I turn it over to Rajesh for the demand drivers and spread. Thank you. Thank you, Ramkim. The key growth drivers during the quarter continue to be the ones you have spoken about in prior two quarters. We continue to see many wins around core transformation. This includes cloud migration, application modernization, and data modernization. In other places, organizations are revamping their operations in anticipation of cloud migration, freeing up resources, people, as well as funding, which are critical to their success there. You can see this in the increased activity around overall outsourcing. We are also saw plenty of growth and transformation side engagements. These are initiatives where enterprises leverage the power of new technologies to embrace new business models, pursue new revenue lines, deliver superior customer experience, or engage with newer segments of customers and transform operations. In our January call, I had given examples of some typical transformation themes we are seeing in the market. M&A, supply chain transformation, customer experience, ecosystem innovation, and operations transformation. We continue to see the same themes play out in Q4 as well. If you look at the key highlight section of our Q4 earnings release, there are at least three new wins in the M&A or diversity chair area, where TCS is helping plan and implement the separation of assets and processes, and to ensure that the divested entity hits the ground running from day one. We now have several success stories in this play, space, validating our approach and capabilities. I'll name a few of these. For example, for a large medical devices company which wanted to spin off an independent, publicly traded new co, TCS carried out the initial consulting-led due diligence exercise and developed a separation strategy business case. Subsequently, TCS led the transaction management office for the carved out entity and developed day one readiness plans including rationalization of the parent company application portfolio, developing the target operating model post IPO, and the operations blueprint for all functions in the new organization. The overall plan minimized the TSA needs to less than three months while reaching operational day one readiness in nine months. The cloud solutions designed by TCS transformed the core operations and substantially reduced the technology debt while enabling best in class resiliency and security. Similarly, from a customer experience perspective, this continues to be a very popular investment theme among customers. Again, we had several uh, wins in this area in Q4. This is particularly urgent in the retail vertical where the pandemic-driven change in shopping behaviors has driven new investments in creating consistent experience across digital and physical channels. Uh, we are very uh, pleased with the uh, example that we have here, which is with the PGA Tour Superstore. It's an experiential specialty golf gear and apparel retailer, and it selected TCS's OmniStore platform, our award-winning unified commerce platform, to transform the shopping experience of the retailer's 8 million customers. Our platform enables a one-card checkout, seamless omni-channel journeys, personalization, and flexible fulfillment with endless inventory across all stores. A journey that starts at multiple places, you can add on to the same cart and check that out, which is one of the first instances of such a capability going live in this industry. We are also partnering customers in helping them launch new products and services to address new market segments, to provide richer upsell and cross-sell opportunities, and to drive growth. TCS helped the North America-based insurer, known for its best-in-class customer experience and innovation culture, to venture into commercial lines for small business insurance, which was being uh, done by their own members. TCS played a strategic role from inception to implementation, including market research, competitor benchmarking, product conceptualization, technology transformation, and integrating with partner ecosystems for the launch of their small business insurance and business owners policy and general liability product. The new product was launched within a year across five states, with a plan to expand to eight new product lines across all U.S. locations and to increase the customer base by approximately 4%, which is expected to generate a billion over the period of five years in new revenues. The last illustration is one of core modernization enabled by TCS using its domain knowledge and intellectual property. Uh, TCS has entered into an agreement with State Street to help enhance its retiree services offering with the provision of a new benefit payment technology platform. We will leverage our TCS Bank's retirement platform in a SaaS model bundled with operations on a managed services basis. This will enable State Street to provide its clients access to expanded operational capabilities and enhanced technology.
coming to the Q4 order book, there have been some of the strengths that we have been driving the strong demand for our services this year. With strong deal wins every quarter this year, we are closing the year with the highest PCV in signed deals this quarter from the time we started reporting this metric. The overall order book signed in the quarter was 9.2 billion. By vertical, the BFSI order book of deal signed during the quarter stood at 3.9 billion, while the retail order book was at 1.4 billion. The TCV from deal signed in North America stood at 4.2 billion. Our total order book in FY21 was uh, 31.6 billion, a growth of 17.1% over the prior year. Looking ahead, as we are entering FI 2022 with much better visibility for future growth, with significant momentum built up over the last couple of quarters, a strong order book and a robust steel pipeline. In the medium and longer term, the technology refresh cycle that our customers are embarking on will unfold across three horizons that is spoken of in the past and provide strong structural growth drivers over the next three to five years. The large-scale shift by customers and consumers to digital channels over the last 12 months now makes it all the more important for enterprises to differentiate themselves in these channels using technology. That necessarily entails greater use of data, analytics, machine learning, and AI for mass personalization. For others, it means exploring new business models that allow addressing new market segments or enable stronger, stickier customer relationships which is, uh, involves collaborating and co-innovating with ecosystem partners to knit together the individual products and services of each of the partners to create new emergent offerings that are purpose-led. All these represent the large growth and transformation opportunity that we have been talking about for the last three, four years, and which has crystallized over the last uh, 12 months, especially around the hyperscaler cloud stacks. The accelerated adoption of cloud by enterprises over the last few months means that going forward, cloud will be the unifying and enabling technology fabric that powers their growth-linked transmission imperatives. However, it is important to note that the technology by itself does not lead to competitive differentiation. In fact, if anything, cloud models by default are about standardization and commoditization. Therefore, differentiation can take place only when a technology solution is contextualized to each customer's unique circumstances. That's where our approach to growth and transformation engagement differs from that of legacy models. One of the weakness of the legacy consulting model is that it places an undue premium on an outsider's expertise and invariably ends up replacing extant ways of working with shiny new and most likely cookie cutter solutions. And that by its very nature dilutes differentiation rather than drive innovation. In sharp contrast, we recognize that there is tremendous value in the tacit knowledge that resides inside the customer organization and which often goes untapped. This is foundational to contextualizing technology within the enterprise. By harnessing the collective knowledge of the customer teams and TCS teams, we are able to co-innovate and come up with transformative solutions that are uniquely rooted in that customer's reality. These bespoke solutions take into account the nuances of that organization's business and technology landscape and amplify the strengths and reduce the risks and results in a different, highly differentiated outcomes. Another important difference is around accountability for outcomes. Our customers truly appreciate our approach of taking end-to-end -end responsibility and leveraging our know-how for their transformation agenda and working along their team with a sense of shared purpose. For the eighth consecutive year, we have been ranked number one in customer satisfaction in one of the largest independent surveys of its kind, polling over 1,700 CXOs of top IT spenders across Europe about their service providers. It is remarkable that on the attributes most critical to growth and transformation, like proactivity, innovation, and business understanding, TCS scored seven to nine percentage points higher than the average. Of course, success in the growth and transformation space is entirely predicted on capability. Our verticalized customer-centric organization structure has helped us build and foster domain and contextual knowledge within the industry solutions units. Our systematic investments in upskilling our workforce, in research and innovation, and in intellectual property have all helped us build strong solutioning expertise. Our business and technology services unit has been steadily launching new service offerings aligned to the emerging transformation themes relevant to our customers. The diversity of factory that I've spoken about in the past, the supply chain transformation offerings, 
our bringing to life framework for iot and for connected production services are all examples of these new offerings equally importantly we have created structures that give us the ability to pull all the different capabilities from across different parts of tcs to put together holistic solutions that help our customers achieve their business objectives all of these have helped us gain a beachhead in the growth and transformation opportunity over the last few years winning share at the cost of legacy consulting organizations we have had some high profile successes that significantly enhance our visibility in our customer organizations and give us a seat at the table in their strategic discussions from a business point of view these engagements are driving high quality revenue growth for us and industry leading profitability we have been sharing these customer stories with you in our earnings call as well as our annual reports the growth and transformation opportunity is very large and in my opinion yet to be fully scoped the transformation imperative will only strengthen over time and as new technologies emerge newer combinatorial possibilities will open up driving further investments by our customers so we believe this part of the market opportunity will see tremendous growth in the coming years that puts us in a very advantageous and promising position in addition to the large outsourcing opportunity which we continue to dominate we are now entering a large growing opportunity that expands and probably significantly increases our addressable market our focus and investments will now be on growing further and gaining more market share in this space towards this we are investing uh, in deepening our transformation capabilities programs like contextual masters which i have spoken about in the past are scaling up nicely we have added newer learning and development initiatives that will identify high potential candidates and put them through experiential courses that help them become more effective transformation leaders we are uh, strengthening our partnerships with large uh, technology providers as well as startups academia and domain specialists towards co innovating and collaborating to create uh, new service offerings we also refreshed our brand last month and launched a new brand statement building on belief to reflect who we are today and to support our aspirations in the growth and transformation space it talks of how every new idea every new innovation is born out of a belief that it will help make the world better and how tcs partners with customers in bringing those beliefs to fruition with that we can open the line for questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sandeep Agarwal from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening uh, to the management team and congratulations on the excellent exhibition. Also, we wish uh, Ramsey best of luck, uh, and you know we will miss his excellent guidance on the financial. Sorry to explain. interrupt you, Mr. Agarwal. Your voice is not very clear, sir. Yeah, sorry. Can you hear me now? Uh, if you can yeah. come on the handset mode, if you are on speaker. No, I am on the handset mode, but I had a choked throat. Uh, so, okay, let oh. me re attend. Yeah, so, so th thanks uh, for giving the opportunity and congrats on a good uh, exhibition, good quarter, and record will win. Also, would wish Ram to best of luck and thanks for all his great explanation of the financials in the past. I have only one question, Rajesh, that you know, uh, if you see uh, only 45% or 50% of the business uh, for us has. Uh, grow started going on a year over year basis and balance 45 50% is still flattish or it is slightly lower than the last year what is your sense that you know when this business starts contributing next year uh, what will be the overall impact on uh, on our overall growth and on particularly when we have 17% higher order win so if you can throw some color on this verticals particularly the manufacturing piece which has not grown much in this quarter also and also the retail ctg and communication where do you see uh, this business is going forward uh, how will there be still one or two quarter before they start 
recovering strongly or you think you know we are probably going to see quick recovery from here thanks that's all from me yeah sandeep i think uh, this quarter and uh, probably for the next one or two um our standard metric of year on year probably uh, is not necessarily the best one to look at on uh, the shorter term trajectory that uh, the sequential quarter provides um it gives a good uh, better and better visibility of the trajectory so if you look at retail itself um uh, it is about 4% on a sequential basis but still it's uh, lagging on a year on year basis given the kind of impact that it had and uh, um, uh, the hit that it took in the first half of the year same is true for manufacturing sequential um, uh, growth numbers are much better than the year on year comparatives uh, reflecting the returning strength but by far it has not completely uh, i mean no means has it uh, fully recovered so we are more focused on the trajectory as you will notice this is our third uh, sequential quarter of 4% plus q on q growth and uh, in line with uh, our overall commentary at the beginning of the year that we think there will be a deep correction in the in q1 and uh, we will see strong uh, demand recovery going into the rest of the year and that is playing out pretty much along the lines that we expected um as we look forward um other than sectors like uh, travel and hospitality other sectors are uh, well on the path to um, uh, recovery subject to a few uh, individual cases but by and large we remain very optimistic about the overall demand scenario okay thanks that's all from my side let's to plus for the current box thank you The next question is from the line of Sudhir Gundapali from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity. Uh, in terms of the deal wins or uh, deal DCV fitness for the sector in general, or uh, DCS in particular, uh, any color on uh, what share of this pertains to absolutely net new spend by clients, and uh, what share pertains to say something like renewals, renegotiated or restructured deals? so no, not very different from our typical uh, trends um as usual uh, year end and uh, or beginning uh, quarter of the year um some of the shorter term contracts get renewed but it is no different from uh, what our other typical trends from a segmental Absolutely. perspective uh, it's quite broad based across all the segments that we report it whether it is north america or uh, bfsi or uh, retail it has seen uh, very strong uh, growth on all the three segments sure uh, and general understanding at the center is that in the uh, post covid era industry should see uh, structurally higher growth rates uh, given the multi year technology transformation cycle we are betting on uh, but if you look at the growth rate reported this quarter uh, adjusted for the couple of captive takeovers that's more or less in line with the typical uh, march quarter's growth Uh, so at a fundamental level uh, how do we read this gap or uh, should this quarter be read as an aberration and going forward uh, do we expect higher than usual growth rates no uh, kept to take over as an integral part of our business model so uh, i don't see any aberration sure uh, sure rajesh and uh, quickly on the reason for the strong increase in other expenses this quarter uh, ram do you want to take that uh you mean other operating expenses right so uh, there is a slight uptick in the uh, subcontracting and uh, uh, expenses which is more tactical we have said that in the past it's a more uh, uh, flex pool so uh, but for that i think there is no significant increase uh, we'll have to look at it in uh, along with the overall uh, employee cost i think the overall it is in line employee cost comes as a separate line item the other operating expenses come separately uh the, so that uh, so we don't see a significant increase otherwise sure uh, thanks sir that's it from my side and all the rest for the future thank you the next question is from the line of divya nagarajan from ups please go ahead Hi, thanks for taking the question and congrats on a good quarter once again. A um, couple of questions from my end. I think um, we've seen uh, the sequential growth numbers be pretty fast, pretty strong in the last three quarters. How should we think about what is normalized sequential growth uh, for a company of your size from here on? That's question number one. And second, um, 
Um, on the margin side, Ranki, we, we have seen margin score go up to almost 27%. Uh, the ratings also moved a little bit in favor now. So how do you see margin trends going into fiscal 22? Thanks, Vivi. I'll take the first section. Um, I think uh, on a steady state basis, as we have discussed in the past, in the pre-COVID time, I think uh, double digit is the aspirational um, band that I believe that if we can achieve that, we are in a good wicket. Um, that itself has whatever construct you can think of from a sequential basis um, once you bring in a bit of seasonality into it. So that's the steady state uh, target that we are uh, working towards. And I've said that in the past that uh, the management team is focused on trying to achieve that. Um, this year will be a bit of a aberration because of the kind of uh, uh, denominator that you have coming off this year. But uh, otherwise, our long-term strategy is built on trying to achieve that double-digit uh, number. Anki, on the margin side? Yeah. And uh, Divya, I think our uh, objective has, to be, has been to be resilient on the margins. Uh, and... Uh, uh, what you're seeing is in that uh, direction. Uh, growth has been a factor, and I think that, uh, that continues, and uh, that will be uh, definitely a contributing factor to that margin resilience as well. Apart from that, uh, uh, there are discretionary expenses, and uh, also our globally distributed uh, model, plus on uh, parameters uh, we have been uh, able to uh, do a lot of uh, things and uh, that is also helping in the margins uh, to be within our uh, target range and also on a consistently on a be uh, steady on that so and uh, currency in the overall year has been uh, helping uh, uh, in, during fi21 to take care of the our compensation increases and that is again another factor which we will continue to watch uh, as we go along. Thanks, thanks, Shanti. Just one last question for me. Um, we have seen a fair amount of deal wins in the quarter, the highest ever. Um, in terms of the deal dispersion, I think a few quarters ago when the crisis hit, you had talked about how uh, there was a bit of a dumbbell shaped curve in how the deal dispersion had um, shaped up. Has that normalized, and how do you see that trending into the next uh, 12 months? Yeah, they were very interesting listing. I mean, uh, as I remember two quarters back, I'd said that uh, it was unusually uh, smaller deals, but the pipeline itself is more evenly uh, distributed. Um, right now, when we look at it, we have had have a fair amount of uh, large deals in here. But uh, the 9.2 is actually has a good mix of large as well as very small deal. The volume of small deals is also uh, continuing to remain quite high. So is that normalization? We can't comment on right now. But uh, the volume of large uh, of smaller deals uh, continues to stay quite high, and the large deals are coming in and acting as a kicker on top. Our uh, to put it in perspective, our largest deal uh, in this quarter is in the range of about 500, 600 million, and that's a one-off. Whereas if you compare to the year ago period when we had 8.9, we had a $2 billion uh, deal in that uh, setup. So it's a much more uh, spread out kind of a structure, but I'm not yet ready to call it as a trend or to generalize beyond that. Uh, thank you so much. And Ramki, it's been a pleasure uh, interacting with you so far. Um, hope to stay in touch post your retirement as well. And wish you all the very best for the rest of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Shah from Ikura Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Rajesh, some of your peers have indicated that uh, in some pockets there is a pricing pressure. Are you witnessing uh, for the same? I can't comment on them. Uh, from our side, uh, pricing remains quite uh, stable. In our industry, uh, old, old services get priced uh, differently and newer services have price resilience, but the uh, overall portfolio uh, remains quite stable. 
ओके ओके आई जस्ट अ फ्यू बुक कीपिंग क्वेश्चन इफ यू लुक एट दी एफ सी एफ जनरेशन फॉर द क्वार्टर दो इट इज स्टिल हेल्दी बट हैज कम ऑफ फ्रॉम द वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग ट्रेंड्स इन द वन क्यू थ्री थ्री क्यू सो इज इट अ ग्रोथ फैक्टर विच इज लीडिंग टू एफ सी एफ नाउ गेटिंग नॉर्मलाइज और फ्रॉम कलेक्शन गॉट डीलेड एज अ होल एंड एफ सी एफ में कंटिन्यू टू रिमेन रोबास्ट इवन इन एफ आई टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू एंड सेकेंड टू लार्ज डील्स ऑफ बी एस आर दे फुल्ली रैम्ड अप इन दू फोर ऑफ दिस फाइनेंशियल ईयर आई टेक दैट क्वेश्चन ऑफ एफ सी एफ राम की हेयर I say I think there has been no delays in collection, etc. Uh, the overall collections have been very steady, very good. Uh, and also, if you have seen our metrics around the DSO and other uh, uh, working capital elements, uh, to some extent, it is true that when growth returns, there will be a, re- a release of uh, working capital. Uh, but uh, the thing to note is our cash conversion is upward of 100% of our uh, net profit. and that is what is uh, critical uh, a little bit of uh, ups and downs with the quarters is not uh, sig- uh, signifying anything else beyond uh, uh, a growth factor yeah just yeah. for you on the second yeah. question uh, raj yeah that's uh, both are fully ramped up okay thanks thanks and all the best uh, and uh, all the best samki thank, thank you thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Sajid Mangat from Bloomberg Twint. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, Rajesh. Uh, just wanted to get uh, get an idea on the growth which you spoke about. Uh, at the end of uh, Q3, you had mentioned that the kind of momentum and deal wins. Uh, if you were expecting a double digit growth as for FY22, uh, are we still on line to get that double digit digit growth? And uh, you just mentioned that. This year might be an aberration. What does exactly that mean? No, we're definitely on track to achieve double digit in FI22. I was answering to Divya's question about uh, overall model that we have, and uh, as I said, the momentum, the exit momentum that we have, that is not necess- that is the aberration that I was talking about. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Keith Buckman from Bank of Montreal. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Brad Clark on for Keith Buckman. Thank you for taking my question. Would you be able to comment on attrition trends in the industry? Um, the last 12 months have been at an all-time low, but as competitive dynamics and demand for skills and services pick up over the next year or so, could you comment on both the expectations for, you know, employment and attrition trends going forward, you know, potential margin impact, and more specifically what you've been observing in the past couple months as it relates to uh, competitive dynamics for talent? Thank you. Broad uh, attrition is directly uh, dependent on employees' uh, belief in the organizations they work for. TCS has a great history of believing in its employees and continuously investing in them, and therefore we continue to maintain uh, our best retention rates. Beyond that, I wouldn't like to comment about industry. You will need to speak to other participants. Next question, please, Margaret. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pankaj Kapoor from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, first, uh, are you seeing any change in how customers are are looking at the technology spend? Uh, what I mean is that are you seeing the spend coming back on the discretionary areas or on the longer term payout projects? That's my first question. you're completing or do you want to yeah okay yeah. so um, and the second you, question sorry <laughs> okay go ahead <laughs> no please, i mean i'll come back with the second one yeah and just you want to take that about the nature of uh, technology spend yeah <clears throat> no overall uh, pankaj you know uh, the the technology spend is uh, stays stable and uh, what we see is um, a number of opportunities coming in the what we call as the growth and transformation side right if you take um, um, uh, let's say financial services customer 
um, you know, aspects like um, uh, portfolio expansion or uh, market penetration or type of opportunities that are coming. And uh, we are very excited about those kind of opportunities. Or uh, in the case of uh, retail, again, whether it is um, you know supply chain resilience. And uh, every every one of the segments that we see and we operate, the opportunities are towards moving. Um, in addition to being vertically integrated, how we can collaborate um, horizontally is um, a very big theme in almost in you know, every industry that we operate, right? And uh, all the investments that we have made in the, in the over the last three years, whether it is agile, whether it is machine first thinking whether it is um, um, uh, the, 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 the machine first methodologies that we have come up with, all of them are um, pretty much uh, uh, contributing to participating in such opportunities uh, neatly. Okay, understand that. Uh, the second question I had, Rajesh, was on the deep pipeline, uh, just taking forward from uh, the earlier question from Divya. Uh, do you still see cost takeout and vendor consolidation views are out in the play, or as a trend, uh, has that normalized now? No, they continue to be. Uh, this flight to quality that we have spoken about in the past, Pankaj, um, is still a fairly large one because uh, people, as they are going through this replatforming, are using that as an opportunity not just to clean up their legacy estate, but they're also relooking at their uh, vendor uh, uh, landscape and uh, seeing what can be uh, done. And there are multiple drivers to that. Uh, Best-in-class cost is a very uh, big driver, but it's also about uh, future-proofing and selecting vendors who are uh, aligned to that technology vision and who can play proactively in that space. So it's a complex set. It is not just a you know, pure consolidation-driven play, but uh, it is a fairly large uh, opportunity set as people relook at uh, what is the kind of vendor landscape that they want and uh, what is the kind of uh, investments and commitments that they are looking for in this uh, transformation opportunity. So uh, fair, very, uh, uh, very large set of those opportunities are also in play and will continue to be there for the next few years. Understood. Thank you, and wish you all the best for FI22. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Rudra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, congrats on another stellar quarter. Uh, first of all, I uh, want to thank Ramki again for guiding us all with your insights, wisdom, and patience. Best of luck for the next innings. Uh, we will miss you. Closing on a high must be satisfying. Uh, Rajesh, you have indicated in the last quarter, I think even on this call, that uh, double-digit growth for C21, F22 looks clearly certain. I think that's probably a low bar right now for you. How high should we think F22 can be? Can TCS gun for industry growth leadership again, given the order book you have and the momentum you see in the markets? And a related question to that, are there any headwinds you are wary of as you, as you start the year? Is, for example, supply or talent availability a constraint? Ankur, that's the easy part. I think supply is definitely not a constraint. Um, our model, as you know, is significantly organic. And uh, as uh, Ramki also mentioned in his early uh, commentary, the kind of investments that we're doing and the kind of platforms that we're building for reskilling is uh, unprecedented. Um, how high, I don't want to uh, speculate on it. It is, uh, I think, growth is not the uh, main, uh, what should I say, uh, strategic factor uh, when we look into the next uh, in FI22 or the next few quarters ahead. Our uh, bigger opportunity and our bigger strategic, uh, strategic agenda is around this whole uh, growth and transformation theme. That how do we participate in that opportunity and how do we build on the, uh, the early gains that we made and uh, really uh, you know uh, concretize that and uh, consolidate that uh, position. That is where our uh, key strategic focus is. And that uh, is something that we are executing on across the full value chain. As I said, in the nature of opportunities that we are uh, looking out for, uh, we are trying to increase our participation on the upstream part. And uh, you know, uh, in, the, in conceptualizing the 
uh, in uh, those kind of transformative and engagements and being part of that whole chain uh, we are looking at the way we go to market on these models um, we are uh, experimenting with various uh, risk taking models uh, we are experimenting with various uh, engagement models with customers um, we are focusing on capability build to support the scale of the opportunity that we see uh, highly integrated uh, development plans that we have also bringing together multiple service practices into holistic uh, solution combinations and structure changes inside uh, similarly i have spoken at length about our focus on innovation uh, two three years back uh, from then on we have been uh, we took our r&d capability and put a very strong explicit innovation focus to it and uh, started externalizing that r&d capability and embedding it deeper into our business value chain Uh, we have spoken about our investments in pay sports uh, spoken about uh, how we are actually uh, looking at it as a new product development pipeline and uh, we have embedded what we call innovation champions uh, more than 200 250 of them in the field in various accounts uh, we have focused on creating those innovation forums that we uh, do across the uh, globe we do four to six every year in, um, in new york london europe uh, latin america japan etc so it's a uh, you know we were on a very large uh, enterprise wide transformation uh, agenda uh, post of 2019 and uh, last year uh, obviously we had to step back and uh, focus on the here and now and stabilize the uh, organization but we are now going back to that uh, strategic agenda and uh, making sure that we consolidate the gains that we see there because that i think is the transformative opportunity and that is what will define uh, who we are over the next 5 years thank you for thank the you. detailed answers thank, thank you sir thank you and code for your wishes thank you thank you sir thank you and best of luck thank you the next question is from the line of rishti from nomura please go ahead uh hi uh thanks thanks for taking my question uh rajesh a question for you um uh, now given given the strong pipeline and given the strong uh uh cycles that we are in right how should we think about the tcv trends in the next couple of quarters that's one and then uh to that extent how should we think about translation into revenues as well uh any headwinds that we should be aware about which would mean that the revenue translation might be slightly weaker um we are in uncharted territory uh, on this currently so i don't uh, want to comment on what should be the trajectory forward um as you know this is the highest that we have ever reported uh, since we started uh, reporting this and uh, we have also called out as we see the you know the mix uh, changing over time over this but the year has been such a uh, volatile year that i would hesitate to extrapolate Uh, further from here let it run for a few quarters and then we should have better visibility but uh, uh, smaller deals have, uh, faster uh, run down and faster uh, conversion to revenue larger deals obviously uh, you know give us visibility over a longer period of time and the last couple of quarters we have seen uh, a fairly large volume of small deals it is also linked to this uh, what i said about the uh, our greater participation in these uh, growth and transformation engagements which uh, by definition tend to be more uh, project centric and incremental project centric um, many of the transformation programs uh, nowadays get conceptualized as a series of uh, sprints rather than as one single mega uh, program and uh, in along with our focus on agile as a overall enterprise uh, philosophy we are quite comfortable with that kind of uh, model because that enhanced engagement that the transformation opportunity provides us uh, gives us not contractual visibility but gives us engagement which uh, uh, secures us the uh, continued uh, uh, participation in the overall transformation agenda so those are the kind of things that we are uh, focusing and developing on okay uh, and just one follow up question on bssi right uh, even if you remove model as a contribution from the larger bssi right? uh, obviously that's a part of the model but still outside of that if you look at the growth i think it is similar to company average broadly 
Uh, if you could just talk about the demand environment in this vertical and how we t how how we think about various sub segments here. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think um, as Rajesh explained, and we are very excited about participating in many of these smaller but very focused and uh, value adding engagements. Um, just to quote a few, for example, um, the the first digital bank in uh, Israel is something that we uh, conceptualized it with the government. We established it. We onboarded the first digital bank into that platform in less than six months. Right? Um, you know, these are the kind of engagement. Second is that in a, when there is an opportunity for someone in Switzerland to come and say that, look, I'm going to have a completely crypto-driven private bank. Um, then how do I actually participate in it? And then that's something that we we have um, uh, we have we positioned our solution, and then uh, the whole value discovery framework that we came up with was um, uh, exactly the kind of opportunities that are coming our way. And all the investments that we have made in the last two three years, whether it is in the area of cloud, in the area of data, in the area of analytics, the whole idea is to really bring everything to the table, conceptualize and shape the opportunity and then say that, look, this is the art of possible. And that's the kind of opportunities that we are getting. And um, and they are often conceptualized today as a series of sprints. And it's important that you are there in the beginning, shape it, and then uh, contract it, conceptualize it, and then execute it in, uh, in the shortest possible time frame. And the contextual knowledge, the agile frameworks, the um, the way that uh, the talent is managed across in a distributed fashion, all of that is helping us to participate in this. And that's the kind of opportunities that we see in uh, the banking financial services space. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chandra Ranganathan from Money Control. Please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Uh, hi, Rajesh. Uh, a great set of uh, numbers. Um, you know, just wanted to ask you, what would be the two biggest um, challenges for you? Would it be talent? Would it be um, the second wave, perhaps, in Europe? If you can take us through one or two key challenges that you see going forward. Um, also, a question for Milan. Um, you know, this quarter is when you will really hit campuses. So do you expect to hire at the same pace? Will it be 19,000 uh, plus? Will that continue to be the case? And um, uh, a question for NGS on um, how the second wave in India has really impacted uh, your thoughts on work from home or, you know, is it business as usual for you? And I want to wish uh, Mr. Ramakrishnan the very best going forward since this is his last quarter at CFO. Thank you. I think, uh, we'll try to take it one by one. Um, see, the key challenge, uh, as I explained in uh, one of the earlier questions, is not talent. Uh, we are very confident about uh, our ability to, uh, you know, both acquire as well as develop our own talent. And mo even more specifically, the kind of opportunities we are seeing are very differentiated. And uh, we believe that uh, we need to grow the talent internally because the philosophy that we are bringing to this growth and transformation agenda is uh, very unique and the first of its kind in the industry. Uh, the typical uh, approach to this has been what we call the legacy consulting model, uh, which is a very outside in, uh, uh, throw everything that you have, replace it with the shiny new uh, uh, template. Whereas our approach in, uh, in line with our strong beliefs that we have internally and we have always been building on, is that it is better to take an uh, internal organic approach towards transformation. And the contextual knowledge, the collective knowledge that uh, resides inside the organization is the one that should be harnessed. And you would have, uh, you know, uh, know, having known us over the years, you would have seen that we have always, uh, you know, believed in this and we have executed on this internally. And the more we speak about it to the customers, the more they find this as a very refreshing change. 
and therefore they are quite excited about uh, you know partnering with us so this the skill set that uh, we are bringing to four is very unique and uh, very very organic and uh, so we are quite confident about that talent availability because it is coming from our own people and our investments in our own uh, people so uh, we are quite confident about it the health challenges that you laid out uh, we asked uh, milind and ngs also to help. we are obviously very concerned but i let milind talk about what we are doing about uh, dealing with it proactively and uh, in a positive way uh, over to you, milind yeah <clears throat> thanks rajesh i think uh, just to continue on the health front uh, health front first i think uh, we have been you know continuing to do, do this for the last 14 months associate health and well being has been our you know top priority in in making all our business decisions and and that continues to be like that even more so now in the second wave uh, you know significantly increasing uh, our communication with our people uh, uh, basically co- continuing to use our own isolation centers and reimagining what else we can do for our people in this in this context of you know uh, uh, really bad situation right now in india uh and uh, you know many other things in terms of you know how do we t- take care of uh, vaccinations enable uh, enable and and also you know encourage people to uh, uh, get those vaccinations all of that is happening in a very very systematic manner and and we'll continue to do it day in and day out continuously connecting with our our you know 480000 plus people on an ongoing basis across the globe you know and that has been, that has been there from day one and that continues like that for the entire year so that is about the health part with respect to your question on uh, on the on the overall in numbers you know the, like last year you know uh, our uh, overall numbers from the campus would be similar if not a little more uh, so that would be there and, and we continue to hire basically you know like rajesh said uh, one of our key source of our talent is internal Uh, and strategic talent development which we do you know uh, quarter after quarter and looking look at looking at the longer horizon as well as mid term goals so both of that happens and we we basically we depend on people from campus uh, internal talent development and then whatever we need from the market in addition so these three together yes will 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 drive our numbers uh, from a supply side of supply supply side and i don't anticipate need any challenge on the supply side Will it continue to be nineteen thousand, twenty thousand a quarter, sir? No, no. What I mean is, you know, we don't. Uh, what what I can tell you is, we have we have hired. Uh, we have been have we'll we'll hire similar kind of numbers on the campus. We will continue to okay. do internal talent development, and we will actually also take it from the market. So you know, depend what number would it be depends on uh, how we do on on all on all fronts. But the, from a talent standpoint, from a from a supply standpoint, we'll be ready to deliver those numbers. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chandra, for that question. And I think uh, uh, three quarters consecutively uh, delivering four percent and above sequential growth wouldn't have been possible, but for the can-do attitude and uh, the resilience that has been shown by our associates. So I just want to first of all thank them for their focus, passion, and commitment. towards customers um overall i think you know uh, the the fpws uh, that we launched and the 25 by 25 operating model uh, the elements of it that we have rolled out they all augering well and um, uh, you know we have been able to uh, uh, sell contract execute um, on board uh, people associates and uh, customers all remotely and um, um, and our hr has also done a remarkable job in terms of connecting one to one with almost every one of our employees at least once a quarter right you know it's been a tremendous achievement because you just imagine our strength of about 400000 plus employees to be contacted at least once every quarter and on a need basis It's been a remarkable achievement, and um, you know I again want to salute our HR officers for that. So I think the focus is really about the moving to a mobility-based uh, infrastructure and uh, enabling people to work from anywhere in a secure basis. I think that will continue, 
and the demand environment looks positive for us and um, uh, and i i do hope that the second wave is not going to bring in a lot more surprises than what uh, we have already faced and i think you know uh, uh, we seem to have, uh, managed many of the uh, levers as it applies to our operating model right so uh, uh, wishes well Uh, Ramki here. Uh, thank you, uh, Chandra, for your questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manik Taneja from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm sorry, Mr. Taneja. We cannot hear you very well. Yeah, but is this better now? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Rajesh, just wanted to pick your brains around. the pricing trend just wanted to understand if customers are much more open to skill based pricing rather than location based pricing as they've got used to the global delivery model much more with the pandemic reinforcing the the model um see the initial um, uh, quarter and all there were obviously as you said um different customers in different situations and we were very accommodative and supportive um to long standing relationships but uh, as the recovery has uh, panned out across multiple industry uh, multiple industry segments the uh, pricing uh, scenario has changed uh, significantly and it's uh, must much more stable and uh, supportive uh, beyond that uh, trends are no not very different from what it was uh, pre uh, pandemic also um higher quality uh, service uh, areas command a premium and uh, higher quality vendors uh, uh, also significantly command a premium and that has improved post pandemic where the value of quality is uh, much more explicitly recognized and rewarded either through market share or better pricing or both so sure. thank you all the best with you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipesh Mehta from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Rajesh, you earlier alluded about growth and transformation initiative. Uh, is the now focus area for next three to five year perspective. So, do you think it could have any implication on your deal win and tenure kind of thing? uh and one should be mindful of any implication on reported those metrics on going forward basis second question is about your salary hike and uh, what would be our thought process on salary hike whether because of six months it would be adjusted for it or you consider it as because last we have delayed it salary hike last year now you, we it would be normal kind of impact and the last question is japan market we have made uh, investment in that market so now i think uh, sufficient period has left so if you can provide some update about japan market thank you yeah the gnt opportunity uh, should unlock uh, newer segments and uh, should be a net new opportunity so uh, overall it should be supportive to our business model especially because uh, as i said we are building upon it in a fairly organic and systematic way and uh, we have been uh, putting together the building blocks of it for uh, many years now so overall i think it is a net new opportunity uh, size and scale of it we'll have to wait and see how it pans out but uh, we are quite excited about uh, opening up a new segment and participating uh, strongly in it but we are at early stages and uh, Uh, the we will have to take on the incumbent base one by one um i'll answer the japan one and then uh, hand it to milan on the salary hike side uh, japan is a market of strategic focus and uh, as uh, everybody knows and we have spoken about it it's a market that has patience we have been uh, systematically uh, developing it uh, where the our delivery models our relationship with customers etc are being uh, the major focus rather than uh, immediate listing so we currently have about uh, 35 uh, priority customers there 
uh, with whom we have substantial uh, growing business and uh, slowly the focus is to move the portfolio into uh, lesser number of clients but larger relationships uh, which is the typical model that we have always had globally and which was different from uh, the business model that existed from the acquired entity so we are making uh, steady progress on that uh, strategy but uh, it is a long haul and uh, uh, but the uh, but the payoffs of it are also worth uh, and the pay that it demands beyond that uh, will uh, nothing more specifically in the short term to add to it over to you melinda on the salary hikes <clears throat> yeah thanks rajesh i think the short answer to that question about salary hikes is uh, it will be similar to what we have been doing in the past no differences on that front thank you but we have uh, already as you know uh, and so we were the first to announce salary hikes last year the moment visibility came back uh, we announced and immediately rolled out uh, starting uh, october 1st itself and uh, once again uh, we have been the industry leaders in announcing um, our salary um, hikes for april and uh, committing that it will be rolled out from 1st april and uh, both are in line with uh, our historical uh, trends for the last few years so we are fully on the trajectory both on salary hikes as well as promotions thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sham sundar shriram from sundara mutual fund please go ahead Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Good evening. This is Sham Sundar from Sundaram. Uh, thanks for taking the question. Um, uh, from a competitive landscape perspective, uh, uh, I mean, you you are alluding that you know uh, uh, this quarter, for example, we saw more of small deals, uh, small size deals than the uh, than the large size deals. Is there anything to read into it uh, in terms of uh, our strategic priorities, uh, 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 looking at more of uh, the smaller size deals as compared to the larger deals? Is there any um, heightened uh, competition that we are seeing in the marketplace uh, that is uh, making us look at these uh, smaller deals? Uh, I just wanted to get your perspective on that. Uh, no, Shyam. I think you misunderstood what I said. Uh, answering to Divya's question, I said in uh, two quarters back we had called out. that uh, there were significantly more uh, small deals compared to larger ones whereas uh, last quarter and this quarter uh, we have uh, the larger deals are also uh, equally there the only uh, area that i pointed out is that in the enhanced uh, tcb that we have reported the strength of small deals that we saw a couple of quarters back has continued it has not been replaced by large deals large deals have come and added on top of it so i think uh, it uh, emphasizes our competitiveness both in the large deals as well as in the smaller deals uh, so but uh, our strategic focus that i spoke about on the growth and transformation the nature of those deals will be smaller so that's the two different things understood sir thanks very much uh, my my second question is on the margins per se i mean you clearly said uh, supply side pressures are not there and uh, we have the very well managed of uh, the uh, talent pool uh, uh, the uh, build uh, uh, development uh, in house per se so just trying to understand uh, when we think of some of the margin headwinds as we head into the next year um, would it be some of the subcon flex pool uh, that we spoke about that could raise uh, that could raise in uh, lieu of the travel restrictions or it could be higher local hiring what could be some of the uh, margin headwinds that uh, uh, we could uh, think of as we head into the next year thank you Yeah, the one immediate one is of course the normalization of uh, some of our operating expenses that uh, in a, the current year is slightly artificial in the operating model perspective but uh, that is uh, obvious one otherwise uh, what you said are all all there which is uh, you know uh, if we are not able to short term talent requirement in various locations uh, if supply is constrained we'll have to do something on uh, subcontractors like you saw it spiking this quarter etc but uh, structurally uh, there are no major issues that we see out there in the immediate horizon 
um, more tactical and operational ones some amount of normalization some amount of uh, individual ones otherwise no structural headwinds sure sure uh, thank you very much thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, to sum up, uh, strong demand for our services has helped us build up an all-time high order book and strong momentum as we enter the new financial year. Uh, we continue to enjoy very resilient industry-leading profitability that gives us the wherewithal to continue investing in building newer capabilities that will allow us to increase our share in the growth and transformation opportunity. The growth and transformation opportunity represents a significant expansion of our addressable market. and it will continue to expand as enterprises depend more and more on technology to differentiate themselves and drive their uh, top line imperatives our investments in our people in research and innovation intellectual property alliance partnerships and in new business models all of which i spoke about has helped us gain a beachhead in this opportunity and our focus for future will be to expand our footprint while continuing to dominate our traditional area of strength we are investing in new initiatives to deepen these capabilities to enable this and the launch of a new brand statement is also an important initiative to support this aspiration and we look forward to your support and good wishes in this journey uh, to conclude i will also want to uh, call out uh, ramki and uh, the role that he has played across uh, tcs and also in the larger group and to thank him for uh, his uh, you know contributions and is being a pillar of strength for the company in its own growth journey over the last many decades um thank you all for participating and uh, uh, over to you for the uh, uh, margaret to close thank you thank you thank you members of the management on behalf of tcs that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines